Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex Rally. Welcome back to In Hand of the Day. I'm shooting this one outside in Southern Cali because it's a beautiful day and I don't want to be inside anymore. So what's up everybody? I'm excited to bring you this hand. It comes from Derek, one of our pro members at Conscious Poker. Um, awesome membership program where you guys can actually get access to getting priority access to having your hands uh, reviewed by me as well as a community of players that want to take their game to the next level and you have feedback from a conscious poker coach that will actually go into our private form and analyze your hands for you build into the community uh, monthly hand reviews from myself where I'm you know in-depth hand analysis that things I don't have time to go into in our, our short YouTube videos here um, that I share about like how to study hands like the pros how to go over game theory uh, exploitative play cash games versus tournaments a lot of in-depth poker strategy in there for you as well as monthly group calls where um, we all come together uh, on a Skype group call once every month and I go over hands answer any questions and you guys get a chance to have group coaching with me as well so if you're interested in the conscious poker pro membership program click the link below you guys can subscribe and join thank you guys so much for your support you guys are awesome and let's get into this hand i'm excited hand of the day we got an interesting hand here from derek who's playing a one two four eight no limit hold them game okay so four blinds you might be in a spot like this if you're playing some live small stakes cash where there's often three blinds at least because there's straddles going on so i chose this hand for that reason as well Derek's in mid position uh, and decides to open to 28. So I like a bigger size open here because when there's more blinds, there's more dead money. So you're going to want to go at 3x, maybe even 4x if you're playing small stakes because people are going to be calling uh, very loose preflop in these types of games. So punishing loose opens and punishing people that play too loose makes a lot of sense. 28 is a good size open. The button now opts to call and the straddle calls as well, the, the big straddle. And we go three ways to the flop. Flop comes ace, 10, 10, rainbow. The straddle checks, now it's on us. And I think here it's a spot where a lot of people are tempted to bet, right? It's like a default bet because we're the initial raiser, we're the, aggress we're the aggressor in the hand, and we flopped a good hand. Like we're a favorite to have the best hand. And so all these things are sort of converging and people think it's a great spot to bet. Derek opts to check here, and I actually like that play. It's unconventional, and here's why. If you think about this hand, one of the questions you wanna ask yourself on flops is can I get three streets of value from my hand? In this spot, the answer is probably no. There's not really that many worse hands that are gonna call a bet on the flop, bet on the turn, and bet on the river. So given that you have to check one street, the flop is generally a good street to do that. There are no hard, fast rules in poker, but this is generally something that you can apply that will help your game be a little bit more balanced. Now, the other reason I like checking the flop here is a lot of times you're gonna wanna check here with hands that have showdown value or check with air. If you have something like seven, eight, you might check this flop. If you have something like king, queen, pocket kings, queens, jacks, pocket nines. Those hands are all gonna check as well. So when you incorporate a strong hand into your checking range like ace, jack, it keeps you more balanced. What this check also does is it allows you to get value from bluffs. If you bet this flop and the button has air, or the big blind has air, they're just gonna fold, you're gonna win the hand. So there's not that many cards that hurt you on the turn. You don't have to really risk that much by giving a free card here, but what you can do is make your hand look weak by checking, give the button rope to now bet and try and steal this pot with nothing, and then you could check call and win an extra bet by doing that. Or you could check the button checks and then the big blind decides to now bluff the turn thinking that you and the button have air. So I really like this check here. Credit to Derek for making a balanced, in-depth play he opts to check and the button bets 60. the big blind calls and we have a clear overcall here we can't really fold our hand is just too strong we can still beat the big blinds check calling range he can have like ace x or king high the button could be bluffing we have to overcall the flop here and we go three ways to the turn The turn comes a queen of diamonds, which is a good card for us, right? It gives us a back, it gives us a straight draw and a redraw to the nut flush. But things get complicated when the big blind bets out. He does bet small, betting 125 into 270. But if you think about what his range is here, what hands is he representing? He never really has a worse hand for value. He's never gonna bet with like ace five or king queen for value. He's either bluffing or he's betting a 10. And if you look at the types of hands that he can have as bluffs, there really aren't that many. What hands call a bet on the flop that are bluffing? The only hands in my mind are king-queen and queen-jack, 
but it doesn't really make that much sense to bluff with those hands because they have too much showdown value. So I guess he could turn king queen and queen jack into a bluff hoping that we fold an ace and it's an ambitious play, but there aren't that many combos of those hands, especially because we block a jack. Now, if you look at the other hands he has for value, he can easily have king jack for a straight or any 10 and now be leading to get value from an ace and protect against draws. I think that's far more likely than him having a bluff. Now, even though we put him on something like a 10, I think we still have to call here. We can fill up with an ace, we can hit a straight with a king or a flush with any diamond. Our hand's gonna be good enough here to call and when you consider the odds that we're getting plus the fact that we're in position, I think we have to call the turn with this hand. But I wouldn't really love my spot and I would be planning on folding to a river bet because I just think he is gonna have a 10 too often. Now we opt to call, the button folds, and we go heads up to the river where things get interesting. The river comes an offsuit king, and now the villain bets 225, which is a small bet. Now here in this spot, his range changes again, because he's not just gonna have any 10. I don't think he's gonna be able to have something like 10-8 here, I just think it's too loose to bet the river with that hand, given this board texture. Our hand looks like a pretty damn strong hand. We're not gonna have that many aces here, so because our aces, like if we have ace five of, of spades, we're just gonna fold the turn. So our range for calling the turn is basically straights, boats, something like what we have, which is, you know, top pair with a gut shot and a flush draw, or a 10. So it doesn't make sense when you look at our range for the villain to bet unless he has a straight or better, or a bluff. Now there really are no bluffs he can have, because if he was bluffing on the turn, he now got there on the river, right? If he had something like Queen Jack, he got there. So there's really no bluffs that he can have aside from King Queen, and I just think there's pretty much no chance he has that, right? So in this spot, he most likely has a boat or a straight. Now, against that range, we should probably maybe call because we're getting a good enough price. We're gonna lose to some boats, but because we're getting such a good price, I think we could call. If he had shoved all in, I would probably just fold this because I think it's that much less likely he has a straight, that much more likely he has something like king 10, queen 10, ace 10. But, and, and we're only calling for a chop, so we're calling an all in to win half the pot. But because he bets so small, I think we can call this river here. Now, one thing that is interesting about this spot that I'm gonna go a little bit next level here that is a play that you don't wanna, I don't advocate making all the time. In fact, I would make it very rarely because ultimately, to make a play like the one I'm gonna describe profitably, you have to be up against a very particular opponent that's capable of hand reading on a deeper level and that's capable of folding because he respects you and he respects the game and the money, right? He's capable of making big folds. Most, this isn't the play you're gonna to wanna to make against everybody, but what we could do on this river is opt for a bluff raise. The reason is because when you look at our range, you look at the types of hands that we can have, Ace-Jack is pretty much the worst hand. Maybe we can have Ace-Five of Diamonds, but there's really not many bluffs in our range. Our range on the turn is straights, boats, and tens. And a lot of our tens have now boated up. So in order for us to overcall, I mean to call a bet on the turn, we have to have a damn strong hand. And in order for us to raise the river, we're pretty much always gonna have a boat here. There's just not that many bluffs that we're ever gonna have. And so when you look at how you should play these spots from a game theory standpoint, what you wanna do is bluff with the worst hands you can have. So if we have something like the bottom of our range, like ace-jack, maybe ace-five is more the bottom of our range, ace-five of diamonds, it's a good spot to bluff because you have to have some bluffs, otherwise you're, only, you're not gonna be balanced. And this is a pretty reasonable spot to do it. I think we could rep ace-10, we could rep aces full, we can rep uh, queens full. Well, we can't really rep queens full because we wouldn't have called the flop, but we're basically repping aces full and ace-10. So we're not repping that many hands, but we're really not repping that many bluffs either. And it's also a spot where people just never don't have it. Like if you're ever in this spot and you call, you're always just shown the nuts, right? So if you're up against the right player and you have the right image and it's the right size game and the guy's kind of scared and he's capable of making a big fold, 
I think this is a spot where you can maybe squeeze in a bluff. Now, I would probably bluff here like one in 30 times just because I don't expect people to fold boats. Some people might call with straights. But if you're in the right situation, it could be a great spot to do it. Now, that's exactly what Derek does. Derek friggin' goes for it. And I'm proud of him regardless of whether or not he wins, lose, or draws. I just respect the fact that someone's got the balls to make a bluff here when it's a good spot to do it. Because that's something that's really hard to do. It's easy to sit here, you and me on camera, away from the hand and theorize about what should happen or like, oh, I would play the hand that way if I was in it because that's what I'm supposed to do. It's another thing to pull the trigger when you got $700 on the line trying to get your opponent to fold a straight or a small boat. So respect to Derek, regardless of the results, that he pulled the trigger here. That's what poker's all about, and I'm, I'm really proud of him for doing that. So Derek ends up going for it here. And again, he's repping a small amount of hands, but our range is basically stronger than our opponents. Our opponents very rarely gonna have ace-10, never gonna have two aces. So it's a good spot. And our opponent ends up tanking and folding queen-10. So Derek tells me after in, in our group forum that our opponent tank folded queen 10, which is epic. So if our opponent's gonna fold queen 10, then I love this bluff. You should be bluffing here all the time if he's gonna fold the top of his range, right? It's one thing to get him to fold a straight, fold him off a chop. If he's gonna be folding king 10 or queen 10, then this is an all out bluff. So it's one of those things where, you know, he shouldn't be folding those hands, but if he is, you could afford to, ex afford to exploit him more. And this really goes back to your opponent. You're gonna wanna make this play based on who your opponent is, what you know about them, and how likely it is you can get them off a of hand. Again, it's a high level play, but it's something that I wanted to share with you guys and worth considering here uh, as well. So I hope you like this hand. Please let me know what you would have done. Credit to Derek, you're a badass bro. Uh, I hope you like this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment below. Again, thank you guys so much for your support. If you wanna join our pro membership program, click the link below for more details. And much love to everyone. See you guys, peace.